Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 4, The Thrones of Ascension, Death March of the Penguins. First thing you'll probably notice is that I reduced my screen size to 1080p so that hopefully the video will fill up the whole frame now in YouTube and not have those little bars on the side. I'm hoping that'll work. We'll see how it goes. This is where we have started. Here, which appropriately is up in the north of the map. Now, we're right next to a throne, which is good, and we're right next to a forest, which is good, because one thing I didn't say last video is that a cool thing about this nation is that each terrain type has its own separate recruitment. Well, each special terrain type. So, like a forest, a swamp, a wasteland, and mountains and caves, they all have a special commander, a special troop type, and a special mage. Some of them are more useful than others, but the forest ones are pretty good. Now we start in a wasteland, which, frankly, I've tested this game out five times, and each time I started in the same wasteland province, so it's definitely not putting me in a random location each time. Now I've gone into the map files and looked around. It seems legit. I mean, there's no tiles that are high ranking for starting, and there's only a few where you can't start. So I could have started in any of these places, but five games in a row right here. I don't know why. I don't get it, but it's fine. I kind of didn't want to start in a special terrain type because I have access to the special unit in addition to my standard capital units. So it just means one more thing I'm going to have to choose between when deciding who to recruit. Before I get completely started, let's talk a little bit about naming. I have made three lists, as I mentioned, for each type. Right now, Fighter is in the lead, but only by a, well, I think, beak is what I said in the comments section. The researchers, though, were pretty healthy, more than I expected there would be. Strange thing, though, if you add up all the names I have on this list, it is more than the number of likes I have on the first video. I must be mistaken there. I'm going to go back and check it out a little bit later and maybe I'll be wrong and that'll be uh, the same. So some of you requested names, very small amount thankfully, requested names as a response to my topic on naming in the channel. Unfortunately, I cannot count that, as to be fair to everybody, I said twice, please leave your name as a separate comment so that I can have them all sorted chronologically and I can know who came before whom. So for those of you who may have accidentally done that, I still love you, that's perfectly fine, just put your request in the main channel. You may be a little bit further down the list than you otherwise would have been, but in this game that's actually kind of a good thing because it's in the late game that the really cool summons and whatnot start appearing so your odds of being something interesting are a bit higher. I hope everybody had fun with the naming. I love some of your names. They're very creative and interesting so I look forward to going with this. In fact, we already have our first named guy, Good Bad Guy, who will be our prophet. So now let me go into a bit of detail here. I consider priests, for the most part, to be battle mages. So when I recruit priests in the future, at least priests that are going to be in battle, I'm going to put them in the battle mage category. Good bad guy is in the fighter category, and the reason why is I've, I've decided that if it's a prophet, it will take the class of whatever it was before it became prophet. So technically good bad guy is a leader and so he is in the fighter field. Hope that makes sense to everybody. I forgot all about scouts, so I'm just gonna call all my scouts sneak, and as I create more of them, I'm just gonna add new numbers to it until I lose track. But that's, that's how I'm gonna work with scouts. All right, so let's take a look at our units, or at least let's take a look at our recruitable units. First off, we start off with a fortress, which is wonderful, a laboratory temple as always, the three special buildings of the Ladane are the Frozen Tower, which gives us water and air gems and enables the recruitment of the Archmage, the Keeper, the Champion, and the Ice Warrior. The White Pit, which gives us one nature gem and allows the recruitment of the Bear Master, Bear Leader, and Bear Rider. And the Ice Blood Hideout, 
which enables the recruitment of the Ice Blood. So as you can see right off the top, there are a lot of capital only people here and I'm going to have to choose very carefully between them when I'm recruiting. So we start off with the typical Ladane Scout, not really different from another scout, although 60 gold makes him seem a little bit expensive. Oh, he's also a spy. Well, that will do it. And he has cold power, which all Ladane have, but that's kind of unnecessary. I'm not going to be using him to fight with. And he also has the magical ice knife. All of these troops that have weapons made of ice, capital I, are magical weapons because it's the eternal ice. I mean, it's not incredible, but and not game-breaking, but it's still neat. And he also is amphibious, which makes a lot of sense. So while he's expensive for a scout, his abilities are kind of necessary because otherwise he wouldn't fit in with the rest of the nation. Then we have the basic recruitable commander, the Land Chief. The Land Chief is a poor amphibian, as are all of the Ladane who are wearing armor. He's wearing full leather armor, and I believe it's seal leather, for those of you who are curious. And he's wearing a cap and a buckler made out of ice, capital I, the eternal variety, and an ice trident. The neat thing about the land chiefs is that they are a defense organizer, which means every province they walk into gets plus one to province defense. I think it only works once per province, though. In a single player game, kind of worthless, because that's just one gold. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that important. But in a multiplayer game, I could see how it would be useful, because... It will allow you to not spend any money on province defense, but still keep your provinces safe from, say, being taken over by one scout. If one province defense can take out one scout, I'm not even sure. Hm. Depends on how well armored the scout is, I suppose. Also cold power, patrol bonus, cold resistant, poor amphibian. Then we have the protector. The protector is a sacred unit. He's also a poor amphibian because he's wearing full leather armor and an ice helmet. He has an ice pike. And as you can see here, again, magical damage. Their damage is pretty good, but if you look up here, if you've been watching the stats as I've been pulling these units up, their attack skill and strength are abysmal. His hit points are pretty good, though, I gotta say. And defense skill is usually pretty good. Morale on these guys is sort of good. These hit points seem a little... a little high. That's pretty good. Huh. I think that may be just because these guys have like blubbery thick skin because yeah even the scout has 14 hit points it's not bad honestly not bad at all this gentleman is inspirational plus two the land chief was plus one and he also has a castle defense bonus of two which i believe means he counts as two people so it's not like an amazing castle defense bonus but it's there and sacred of course now i could have I was looking back over it, and there's other things I could have done with my Pretender. I could have taken away the air magic, since I have recruitable air mages that can get as high as my Pretender. But And, and I could have given him more water in order to have, like, say, quickness. But then I figured, well, this whole nation has water mages. Like, every mage in this whole entire nation has water magic. So they all can cast quickness themselves. So it's kind of a bless I didn't need, since it's going to be so ubiquitous later on anyway. And so, you know, it could have gone either way, but I just kept it the way it was. Now this is an interesting character. He is an ice sculptor. He is sacred, priest level 1, but what makes him interesting is he is an inspiring researcher. All researchers in the province where he is gain plus 1 to research, but he himself does not research. And the idea is that he sculpts research utilization tools and tablets, and he assists the mages. He also generates money. He generates five gold a month, which, if you look at his cost, I think it's morale, his cost is 22 gold a year. So you can see that he makes about 30 gold a year just by existing, which after a little bit over a year means he's net profiting. So one strategy, if you want to be really cheap, is to just hire these guys constantly until finally you have an unstoppable gold advantage. I'm not going to be doing that, but I am going to be hiring them one per province where I have researchers and, and stuff like that. And I will be using them early on as priests to build temples, which I'm going to need quite a few of. Then we have the Ice Bone. Interesting character as well. One water, one air, two holy, sacred, has a forge bonus of one. And of course, what that means is he uses one less gem to forge an item. But he's also a Master Smith too, which is very important. That means that even though he's one air, one water, he can forge as if he is three air, three water. 
So this is a character that you're going to want to empower, even though it's expensive, because even if you empower him to one level in something, one nature, one fire, well not fire, I'm going to avoid fire, but one death, you can pretty much forge most of the basic items with him because he'll act as if he's two levels higher than he currently is. Also with Ice Trident. These guys are pretty powerful, but they are made up for it by their incredible cost. He's not inspirational, he's negative inspirational, and he's an inept researcher. So we're going to only get a few of these guys and for the purpose in which they are to exist. Then we have our main research mage. This is the Ice Reader. One water and a 50% chance of one air, but they are adept researchers plus five, so that's basically what they're for. We're gonna be hiring a ton of them in every castle that we have to build up our research. And then in the late game, I don't know, I guess we can throw them on the battlefield or just have them sit around, hang out, not even sure. Then we have our basic Ladane mage. Now up to this point, all of these people can be recruited in every single castle. Here forward, they cannot. The Ladane Mage has one air, two water, with a 50% chance of another water or air, and a 10% chance of nature. So there's a lot of interesting places this guy can go. He's going to be our main battlefield mage, since he is recruitable anywhere, and I have already researched the spells that I think will benefit these guys the most. Mostly, obviously, water-based spells. Falling Frost for the ones who gets the extra, the extra water pick. Lightning bolts to get the two air picks. There's a lot of things out there. Maybe they'll be summoning water elementals, which will actually be ice elementals in our cold dominion. And you can, of course, read the descriptions. I'm not going to read them out. Now we get to our capital only, guys. This is the Ladane Archmage. He is awesome. Two air, two water, one holy with a 100% chance of water, air, another 100% water, air, and then a 10% of air, water, nature, or blood. So this gentleman has a pretty good chance of being four air or four water, and a very minuscule but possible chance of being five of either of them. So he could potentially be very powerful, although I guess in most cases we're going to get one of each and nothing, so we'll get three three, who knows. Either way, this guy is a beast and pretty good to have on the battlefield. When I recruit these guys, they're going to go straight to the battlefield, and that's where they're going to stay because they're old age, and they're not going to last long. I will, however, use some early on as site searchers, because if I can get, let's say, one air, one water, I can find all air and water sites, which is very important. Then we have the Ice Keeper. The Ice Keeper is going to be our throne guy, and I want at least one of these guys, well, just one of these guys, with every major army later on in the game because they're three holy and they can divine bless which will be very important later on when we have our summons who are sacred and they're, I mean they're decent mages I kinda wish they weren't honestly because they'd be cheaper but you know I'm gonna be using them for their priestly powers and their priestly powers only why would you cast spells when you can smite all day long without accruing any fatigue and they also have a chance at nature or blood as well which nature would actually be great because it would take away the old age they are also fortune tellers and sacred, but other than that, the same old Ladane-ness. Then we have our champion, our main leader guy. He's sacred, has an ice glaive, ice javelin. He is inspirational plus two. So really, the only reason you would want this guy over the protector is more leadership, and I think he has a better squad morale bonus. So it's plus two, plus plus two whereas the Protector is plus two, plus zero. So that's the difference. And this guy's capital only, of course. So then we go to our Bear Master. I'm going to recruit one of these guys right away because I want three nature. Unfortunately, I thought they came straight with three nature, but it looks like it was a 20% chance. I want him to site search for nature sites, and I, I was hoping to get three, but even if I get two, I'll still get most of the sites. He has Animal Awe, which is not that useful, really. He is a healer and a disease healer, though, which is fantastic to have in your capital right at the beginning. And with armies, honestly. And he's a Beastmaster plus two, so he leads animals quite well. All in all, I love this guy. Expensive, but fantastic. Not too good defense, obviously, with just furs. Then we have our Ladane Bear Leader. Capital only, Bear Cav. This guy's... Pretty macho, little penguin riding a bear. They have gluttony, which is a negative. They have inspirational plus one, and very minor leadership. So, 
50 hit points though, maybe, you know, I was saying this nation doesn't really have thug units, but I think this guy might just make it work. He doesn't have boot slots, of course, as cavalry, which I love, I love boots. And I don't get that idea either, because even if the, even if you're not walking on your feet, you can still have feet, but whatever. <laughs> so there's our, there's our main bear cav leader. Then we have our blood guy, also capital only, the ice blood. Two blood, one water, one air, with a 20% chance of three blood. So he can do blood sight searching, but mostly he's going to be blood hunting for me. He's stealthy, and he's also unfortunately a heretic, but that's not even the worst of it. He causes unrest. So any place where I'm blood hunting, I'm going to have to have extra patrollers to make sure that we don't get into the crazy levels of high unrest, especially if we start getting a lot of slaves. But we're going to need to do so because as you've seen looking around, these guys are pretty weak on the attack skill. The blood summons make up for that. They're penguins that accept demons into them, and that gives them increased attack skill. So probably not the most pleasant thing in the world, but if you're fighting a war, I guess, you know, decisions, decisions. So that's it for capital only and main fortress recruitment. Now these two are actually special units that come to any swamp, sorry, any wasteland that you control, regardless of if there's a castle on it or not. What's neat about them, and I'll be recruiting a ton of them actually, is they have glamour. With the idea being that they're specifically evolved to fight in the snow, the arctic wastes, so their fur is all white. So that kind of functions like glamour in a snowy environment. Now, if they're walking across the desert or a field, not so good camouflage, but there's no way to say glamour, but only in a cold three environment. So hopefully we'll push our dominion out far enough that thematically it makes sense. They also have pillager and wasteland survival. They are poor amphibians, just because they don't they don't really wear armor that would make that happen, but they're, there's wasteland evolved, I guess, so they don't swim as well as the rest. Then there's the Ice Bone. Interesting unit because it has a 50% chance of a death pick, which is, I believe, the only death pick in the nation, and I believe one death is enough to cast the death sight search spell. So that might be something worth exploring later on, although death really isn't a very important path to me right now. All right, so now we have units. We have the Ladane Militia, just your typical militia unit, 13 hit points, which is nice, but no protection, strength, attack, and defense, very poor, as is morale. Now bear in mind that all of these units have cold power, which means in cold three, their strength, attack, and defense, I believe, all raise by three. I don't know if anything else does, but I know those three do. So their attack skill is still terrible, but passable in a cold three environment, which is why we want to build temples and push our dominion out as far as possible, which is also why going up late in the game against Abyssia and the other kind of hot nations will be very troublesome for us if their dominion is able to outcompete ours. So I think that'll add a little bit of challenge to it. There's the standard Ladane fighter which is very similar to the Militia, except he has an Ice Trident. Higher morale, generally higher stats as well. This is going to be the mainstay of our front lines for the early game. The Ladane Defender, he wears armor as well as carries a shield. So against archers and whatnot, these guys are much superior. They have a length 5 long spear. It is not, note, magical damage, even though it looks like there's ice at the end. It is not the capital I ice that gives you magical damage. Then we have the long ice. They are sacred. They are good castle defenders. They can formation fight, which is cool. <laughs> and somebody mentioned in the comments, oh, you're, you're using cool unironically, not knowing that it's penguins and ice and cool. I get it. I get it now. <laughs> so they have a link six ice pike with uh, magical damage, but unfortunately no shield. So while I'd love these guys to be in the front lines, and eventually I will put them there against heavily ranged armies, it may not be the best choice. Then we have the Ladane Ice Thrower. These are the sacred troops I'm going to be recruiting right off the bat. They basically are the only ranged unit of the Ladane, and they have five javelins, but they're magical javelins. So, And since they're sacred, my bless will give them a bit more precision, which will help hit things, hopefully. 
I'm going to have to play around with the battle orders a lot in the beginning because one thing I notice is they tend to get ahead of the front lines to throw their javelins and because they're faster. So I'm going to have to place them carefully. Next we have the Ladane Ice Warrior. Sacred Warrior, he also has three javelins, but mostly just the really awesome glaive. But again, no shield protection is very terrible. So it's good that we have the nature mages, even if they are capital only, because this nation is in dire, dire need of protection. Oh, they do have a shield. They have an ice buckler. They, yeah, I was saying it was the javelin. I can't say javelin men, can I? How about javelin pen? <laughs> we have glaive's pen, javelin's pen. <laughs> anyway. All right, here's our Ladane Bear Rider. There are Bear Cav, same thing, Gluttony. They have an Ice Long Spear, capital I. Of course, the Bite and Claw. Generally, these are pretty solid guys. Limited recruitment, though, worth noting. And the Tundra Warrior is the Wasteland unit. Glamour, Pillage. Also three Javelins. But, so, I'm gonna have a lot of choices to make here in my capital to start out with because if it were just in a plains, obviously I'd go straight for my these guys and these guys, but I might want to throw some of these guys in with their glamour, because that will certainly avail them in battle, especially against independence. So it's something to consider and think about. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and have a good one, everyone.